know about you guys, but like recently, there's been a hole in my heart. And I think for a lot of my friends as well. Uh, Newton Mail has shut down. This is a mail client that was uh, near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. Uh, people are literally crying now that it is gone. But it did make me, it got me thinking. Uh, you know, Newton is gone. Sparrow got bought up by Google. Mailbox got bought up by Dropbox. Maybe now, maybe now is the time to build a new email client. <laughs> right? Facebook hasn't bought one yet, so maybe. <laughs> so maybe what I'll do is tonight, I want to build an email client. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pare down the uh, options here. What I want to do is actually just focus on Gmail, make it a little bit easier. Uh, Gmail has been around for a while. Uh, they've had an opportunity to really finesse their API. I suspect if there is a good email API out there, it's got to be Gmail, right? All right. <clears throat> so if I were to build an email client, unfortunately, I'm probably not going to start from design components uh, because I cannot design anything. I need someone else to do that part for me. So what I want to do is start from the data structures. I want to know what does that API look like? I probably want to pull out maybe the threads, right? the most recent threads from my inbox. That seems reasonable before I would start. Before I do that, I might want to say probably authenticate with uh, Gmail. So let's just kind of see how do we authenticate with the Gmail app. OK, so got some good results here. Uh, I have about, I don't know, eight minutes left maybe. Um, I don't know. I, I see a link here to console. I like consoles. Console might be the thing. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here now. Uh, all right, I think I'm lost. All right, all right. Let's let's just assume I'm just I'm I'm authenticated with Gmail, right? Let's just assume somehow magically I have access to to Gmail. Probably what I want to do is I'll, I'll use Gmail, and, or I'll use Google, and I will search for the API on how do I list threads. And you can see very helpfully here, Google has found uh, user.threads list. This doesn't look too bad, right? So I can see, I just simply make an HTTP request right here. Already seems better than IMAP. Uh, it takes some parameters. It's not too bad. Uh, but I do want to know, like, what data structure does it return? I see here, if successful, it's going to return, they promise that they're going to return some threads. So let's go take a look at what, what those threads look like. And I see a thread is a data structure with four keys. Everyone count them. ID, snippet, history ID, messages. All right, everyone got that last one? All right, threads are made up of messages. And I notice over here that there is this nice uh, little playground. So I don't necessarily have to authenticate offline. I can just do it here. Running out of time, though. Um, anyone have their Gmail user ID? Uh, I, I'll just guess. I don't see it here, but I, I just maybe there's a magic, you know, me. I can type in me. Um, I don't know what these other things are, but I'll just go ahead and execute it. Uh, take care of authentication. Okay. Okay. Hey, we got response back already. Right, we're halfway there. And if we notice, here are the threads: uh, ID, snippet, and history ID. Anyone notice a missing key? Anyone want to raise their hand? Volunteer. Right? Messages, right? Because who needs messages in your inbox view? Right? Uh, so they lied. First of all, they lied. And I am about halfway out of my time. Uh, so we are in trouble. Uh, I kind of wish, you know, there was like, I wish there was like this world in which I could just kind of explore the data, right? Because I, I had to go to Google Sites. I had to try to figure out how to create a client, how to authenticate, find the endpoints. That, was a little bit painful. I kind of wish, like, let's say, I don't know, maybe if I was like building a YouTube app. I'm actually gonna take a side detour. I'm so confident here. Uh, I'm gonna say I was building a YouTube uh, app. You know, maybe I have to deal with the YouTube API. And I was like, all right, uh, I know YouTube, and I see autocomplete, and I have an ID of a video here. And so I'm gonna say, all right, for this ID, I'll just make a quick network request. I'm not authenticated. I also wish that authentication was just uniform across all these different services. Let me come in here, allow this access, or make that query now. 
And now I can just kind of like autocomplete. I wish, I mean, in this hypothetical world, right, like we could just like autocomplete our way through these different APIs. So let me pull out the title of this video. All right, that's, that's kind of cool. And uh, let's say if I, maybe I want to know about the channel. I can pull out the channel ID, right? And this is actually a thing that upsets me a lot, channel ID. How often do we care about channel ID? Almost never, especially if we're building like some sort of UI, right? And this is the thing that I think is nice about GraphQL is we can just say, I just wanted the channel, right? I just want to hop over the channel. And I'm going to go ahead and go into snippet, pull out the title of the channel, and that's pretty nice. And I kind of feel like, you know, there's some sort of analogous thing here where like we have a graph for documents. That's the web, right? How much value does the web give us? We have a graph for people. That's Facebook and LinkedIn. Like that's a lot of value there. There is no graph for like the world's data, right? Every time like some Salesforce uh, case is, exists over here and a Stripe customer over here, there's no connection between those two things. And I, I wish like in this hypothetical world, like, I don't know, you know, if a YouTube channel is like associated with Instagram or Twitter, I could just say, hey, go grab me every Twitter account that this is associated with and hop over into Twitter and pull out the first five tweets. And now for each of these tweets, I want to pull out the text. And now we're in the Twitter part of the API. And I would say, for example, for each of those five tweets, any user who is mentioned, I want to know their screen name. And I want to go ahead and pull out their first five tweets as well. And now the obvious thing to do here, having gone from a YouTube video over to a YouTube channel, over to all the YouTube accounts, or sorry, the Twitter accounts, to all the followers, to, you know, at the very edge, if anyone tweeted about a video, we of course want to hop back into YouTube. And then somehow like this hypothetical engine would just like take this description of the data I wanted, figure out how to execute it across all these different services, and just give me the exact data I want. And I actually think that's like the things we could build on top of that would be pretty cool. Like, I don't know, if we're trying to build like an email client, we could build something like a file explorer. And I would argue that, you know, I don't want to have to go and read your API documentation if you're a web service. What I want is, I, I know Gmail belongs to Google. And I want to just open up Gmail. And I want to pull out some threads. And now for each of these threads, I want to pull out the expanded one with the full messages. <laughs> and for each of those messages, I want to pull out the payload. And so I can just kind of explore here and incrementally build up this thing. And again, it's actually going to pull out real uh, Gmail from me. Uh, and for those of you who haven't dealt with IMAP before, you would think that Gmail would have, for example, a from field, right? Emails we typically think of being from someone. The way IMAP works is you have a list of headers, and you iterate over them, you fold over them, trying to find the from looking one, right? Hopefully you can discern the from one. Uh, but if we have a graph that's a data structure, and we can build all these cool tools, we can also build functional transformations on top of those, that graph. So someone could come along and say, hey, I've already written a from field for you. You can just incorporate that into your graph. Uh, and maybe I want like subject and two. And suddenly I have, uh, hopefully no one has emailed me anything too sensitive recently, but I actually have my real uh, messages coming in here. Uh, right now. Uh, and actually, as I'm scrolling over here, I see there's another cool header called list unsubscribe. Uh, how many of you guys know, raise your hand if you know what the list unsubscribe header is for? Ooh, like two, three people, three people. All right, so this is really cool because in Gmail, you have this little unsubscribe thing right here, right? That's what powers it, is this list unsubscribe. And so now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of scroll up here and I can see, I can hover over like the parameters for a thread. I see that this query works the same as Gmail. Maybe like I want to find all of the messages that have unsubscribe in them. And what I want to do is I actually want to say, let's just pull out 10 for right now. And I'll pull out just the list unsubscribe. So now I have 10 emails that should have list unsubscribe linked here. So maybe what I, what I want is not an email client, it's like an anti-email client, right? Like I want to find all of the unsubscribe links in my entire inbox and unsubscribe from all of them. So what I'm going to do is remove this limit. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go a little bit of a pre-bake, you know, a home cooking show app here. I just have this little app over here. I'm going to copy the query in. 
And what I'm going to do is this is going to run in the browser. It's going to fetch uh, a bunch of uh, emails that have the unsubscribe in there. And it's going to, at 20 at a time, start collecting all those unsubscribe links. And it's going to look something like this. So I actually started this up a little bit early ago. Uh, it looks like it has found nearly 6,000 emails over the past 10 years so far, still going. Uh, and when I hit unsubscribe, it is going to go through and unsubscribe from all of them right now. A little bit scary. Could be friends, blogs, could be you know medical subscriptions. I don't know. But I think it's going to be good, right? We can shed some weight from my inbox that has gained over the past decade. Uh, the only problem I think is, you know, six thousand emails. That is a lot of gravity. I don't feel like we've kind of captured it here. Again, with my design sense, we just haven't done it, you know, justice. So I think we need to kind of up it a bit. So I'm going to turn on the nuclear option here. All right. All right, I feel like this gets a much better job about what we want here. All right, so I am going to unsubscribe from 6,200 newsletters. So I want everyone to count with me, all right? Five, four, three, two, one. There it goes, and it's gonna scroll all these, <laughs> these links as it's unsubscribing from them. The server is, that's two, like 1,500 right there. Uh, we have actually unsubscribed. This is a nuclear unsubscribe anti-email client uh, that we built in about five minutes here. <laughs> All right, and I have to uh, give credit where credit is due. I actually didn't build that app. Uh, this was built by Yuki uh, over here, if you want to stand up and say hi. So Yuki actually built this for us. Uh, she just graduated recently uh, with cognitive science, is getting into programming. She built this entire app in two days. And did you ever read, was that the first time you've seen the Gmail API documentation? Yeah, so you've never looked at it before. Yes, and we was able to build this super cool app. Uh, yeah, so my argument is, you know, there is a graph for all the world's data. Uh, we just imperatively traverse it as programmers. Every time you go into Zendesk and you get a ticket out, and you pluck off a customer ID and you go into your database and pull out that customer, you are imperatively traversing the graph, right? And the computer can't help you out. The more that we get the graph into data structures, the better our lives are going to be as programmers. Thank you.